I, uh, I call the meeting to order for the Oconee County Board of Zoning Appeals this date on uh, April 25th, 2019. And the first item of business is to review the minutes for last meeting. Uh, based on the minutes that have been handed out, does it have, anybody have a motion to accept the minutes or to modify them? I have one comment. On uh, page three, statement of criteria for board action, since Mr. Gardner called for a motion in the affirmative, I don't think Mr. Gardner called for that motion. It was, it was, uh, that was Mr. McKee. I, I was going to bring that up, so I'm glad you caught that thing. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Gardner was a, was the requester, the applicant. Right. We'll change it. Yes. Are there any other comments or suggestions? If not, may I, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried and minutes are approved. Okay, the next item in the, on the agenda is the public comment for non-agenda, and I guess we don't have anybody for that, so yes, sir. we'll move right along. So the next item on the agenda is the staff update and discussion. Would you like to cover those? Yes, sir. Um, we're currently working on our comprehensive plan. We've sent out uh, surveys and information to about 10,000 people, uh, or 10,000 addresses, I should say. We received several hundred surveys in response. We hope everybody who gets involved with our comprehensive plan process. Um, we're also working on a corridor plan, which we should have more information on next month regarding 123 between Seneca and Clemson. Uh, as far as member training, uh, I believe Bill would have sent out an email to you all. We're having a, a webcast training here. I'm going to, going to go ahead and uh, advertise the meeting, advertise it as a meeting, just in case four or more of you show up. Um, six if you need it, or five if you need it, I'm sorry. Um, so if you all are available to come that day, it would be the easiest, most pain-free way for you all to get that training. We'll have it here. And just let you know that. So that's that, what I have. That date is what date? I believe it's the 14th of, Tuesday the 14th from, okay, yeah. uh, although you. that's not, um, that actually be ongoing training. You still, you still need a, your initial training, I believe that's right. No, I don't. Oh, you don't? No, okay, do all right. Not. I just need the, uh, Nine to nine to twelve thirty is what I got. Yes, sir. Thank you, Adam. Mm -hmm. And that concludes. Anything else? No, sir. Okay, so on the agenda tonight, we have two items that are requests for variances, and um, uh, I'll read the first one, and then we'll have um, the the format and going through both of these will be the same. That first, there's a, a statement of matter before the board, so our staff will present the case as they understand it as to why the, the individuals are requesting the variance. Then there'll be applic applicant comments that can say why they want and why they're making the request for the variance. Then staff would have a comment, an opportunity to comment the applicant's comments if they have some at that time. So then the opposition has a chance to talk as to why they think it shouldn't be approved. Then there's rebuttal by the applicant. and then there's really questions from the board uh, as, as board members. So there is a process in going through this. Um, the, the items tonight have, have some controversy to them, so I suspect there'll be some, uh, so a lot of heavy interest in, in the topic, and that's good, we appreciate that. But we do ask that you follow the, and understand there is a process that we're going through. So we don't want anybody standing up at any given point and, and interrupting somebody else or, you know, so please, be courteous to other speakers, and please help me uh, administer the process as, as I indicated. That would be helpful to us. So the, the first item on the agenda is application BA19-0 and 1, request for a variance of five feet from the side property line setback requirement for two parcels, as so listed on Dodgins Lane in the Seneca area to construct single-family homes on each lot. So the, could we have from staff a uh, statement of matter on this variance request? Yes, sir. Uh, the applicant has submitted a uh, variance request for five feet from the side property lines. Five feet is our setback requirements currently in this zoning, the control-free district. Uh, he's asking for a, the full five feet for the setback. Um, that is... That, that is really the long and the short of it, um, of the request. They are long lots, and that is what he's asking for. Okay, thank you. 
So now this would be the opportunity for the applicant to make a statement as to why they would like this variance to be approved. Good evening. And if you could give your, your name and, and address, please. Yes, sir. My name is Bill Hammond, H-A-M-M-O-N-D, and I live at 419 Belmont Avenue in Greenville, uh, South Carolina. Um, I'm here tonight, first of all, let me thank you for your time and for hearing uh, my request. It is, it is a request. I've got four documents that I put copies uh, of in front of you, and I think you had them before, and I believe Adam's got them on the overhead. I've really prepared my notes. I'm going to read, read them, and I'm going to leave my notes so that if y'all do have a question later on, you can go back and unravel it from what's typed out. I didn't write it, fortunately. You couldn't read it then. Okay, the first document is the original plot plan for the Laurel Point community recorded by the developer. As you can see, it shows all equally sized houses positioned on the seven lots, which are approximately 40 feet wide near the water. As I understand it, there were no setbacks at that time. I'm not really sure when the current setbacks were put in place, the five foot. I purchased lots two, three, four, and five in approximately 2006. At the time, my plan was to construct four houses of the same design and sell each one in 13 four-week intervals. I abandoned that plan when the Great Recession of 2008 struck. I did construct the two houses on lots two and three. The, de the developer, Tim Revis and Jim Swink, cited the houses and performed the actual construction. Okay, the next uh, slide, please, Adam. There we go. This slide is the architectural drawing of the two houses that were constructed, and it is the same drawing that I would use to construct the next two houses. Uh, note that the houses, you probably can't read it, but they are 40 feet wide and 69 feet deep. So if you go back to that plot plan, you see the house runs from the water up the hill, 69 feet, and then from left to right as you stand at the water for 40 feet. Now, I, I don't think Adam has the next document, which is a picture, an overhead picture of the two houses that were constructed there, which you have. I've got three more copies here. If somebody else wants a copy of that and doesn't have it, it at any rate, um, that, that's an overhead picture of houses on lots two and three. Note that they appear to be constructed on the lot line, staggered one behind the other. Okay? I, it looks pretty obvious to me when you, I guess somebody took that picture with a drone. So the next document is the survey, my survey of lots four and five. Again, you're going to have a hard time reading dimensions but I did take the time to put on an Excel sheet, which is attached to what you have there, and Adam's got it up here as well, um, the dimensions that you cannot read so that you can see exactly how much space these two houses now have on the existing lots. So let me read this. This is my survey of lots four and five with the houses cited on them. The dimensions of the house corners from the lot line are on the drawings, but at this scale are hard to read. The Excel spreadsheet attached shows these dimensions. As you can see, the houses will not fit on the lots with five-foot setbacks. Okay, and this is my summary. Based on the original community plan, I request that the five-foot setbacks be removed and that the construction of houses on lots four and five be based on a zero lot line, which precedent has already been set in the community. For lots four and five, a zero lot line would imply that house eaves would encroach approximately one foot zero inches onto the adjacent lot. And when I say adjacent lot, I'm talking about lots four and five. I'm not talking about the existing houses that are there now. They would not encroach on them. Uh, as with the houses on lots two and three, the houses would be staggered as shown on the survey. My next point, since I am the original purchaser of lots four and five and am still the owner, 
consideration should be given to grandfathering these lots to the setbacks that were in place at the time of the purchase. There were no setbacks at that time. I did talk with Tim Revis before this meeting, and that was his understanding. It's my understanding at this point. Y'all may have additional information that I don't have. My third point, should the board disapprove my variance request, smaller houses must be constructed on lots four and five, which will decrease the value of the existing houses. My fourth point, with a zero lot line, the house on lot four will be three feet, six and a half inches from lot three. With a zero lot line, the house on lot five will be five feet, two and three eighths inches from lot six. And I guess the most uh, salient point I could make is that taking 10 feet out of these rather skinny lots, um, there, it takes 25% of buildable area away. So they're, they're only, uh, I've got a 40 foot house there, so the lots are only 40 feet wide, basically. So if you take 10 out of that, 25% of the billable area is gone out of those lots. So that's uh, what I had to say. As I say, I'll leave these notes with Adam. And if there are questions, certainly I'll be glad to answer them. He's got my cell number as well. I'll leave that. Just Thank a minute. Are, are there any questions that the board members have of Mr. Hammond? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Hammond, did I understand you to say the, the houses you propose, the new houses you propose to build will be the same? Yes, sir. That's same footprint. So you're going to have, you would, when you get done, you'd have four houses that look the same. That's right. Two yeah. look exactly alike right now. The original right. That's what I noticed, yeah. Four. But those are, those people aren't related or something like that. It was not a family compound or something like that. It's just you built the houses to be identical and two different people have bought them. That's, Is my, well, I got that's that? correct. Is that right? That's correct. And you expect two, two other different people to buy houses that look exactly the Absolutely. same. And that's, I'm not going to be living in one and, nor any I understand. No, I understand. So the development is intended to be identical houses that's correct. on these narrow lots. Um, and it looks to me like you have the long skinny lots because you wanted to maximize the waterfront. Well, I, I didn't well, the, do this plan as I mentioned earlier. Who's the, the earlier was developer. By the developer who was Tim Revis and Jim Swink. And that's probably exactly what they were doing, maximizing buildable area as mm -hmm. best they could. Mm -hmm. That's back when, when Duke had a 75 foot requirement for docks. Uh, Duke's each requirement for each, each. yeah, you could, you, you, if you had, a, you had to have a minimum 75 foot waterfront to have a dock. Yes. Now it's a hundred foot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I have a dock permit. Each lot. Yeah, I know you got docks on there. You, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're saying the eaves will go over, in some cases will, will extend over the lot line. Well, you could build it one foot off the lot line and call it zero lot line, I guess, so that the eaves would not encroach and the house still would not bother the lot that's on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. In this case, lot three would not be affected and lot six would not be affected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans for lot one? Sir, I don't. You don't, don't own lot one? Lot so, one. Uh, okay, so. I don't own, the only two I currently own are these two. Okay, so it sounds like variance. of the six lots we're talking, four would have kind of the identical house on them. That's correct. Okay, thank you, sir. Well, thank you. Does anybody else have some? Yes. Mr. Hammond, um, question. Uh, when you look at the uh, plan here, you're with the two houses are alongside, adjacent to one another. What is the uh, proximity to one to the other? This plan right this here. This plan right yeah. that, that um, I did not get them to give me that measurement, but if you, in your mind's eye, can see that it's 40 feet from left to right in that particular <coughs> survey, it's probably 40 feet from the front of the house on the right to the front of the house on the left. That, that's what it appears. Now, I can't say exactly. Yeah. <coughs> Are there any other questions of the board of Mr. Hammond? Uh, if not, I have a, just a quick question. Yes, sir. At any point, did you register with the county your intent of what you were planning to build so that you kind of had that, that, that mindset already in, in the, the county's planning department of what, what your intent was for this, this property? Well, the developer did the original plot plan laying out all seven lots. And when I purchased, that was my understanding. There would be seven houses identically sized for that community there. So 
I really can't say what his goal was. And my goal right now, since I, I, I bought four of the seven lots out of the chute. I was the first landowner there. So two lots I built houses on and sold, and the other two I still own since 2006. So I'm trying to find a way to move forward here and uh, uh, sell these lots to someone else, but also leave behind a legacy that's positive and not negative. And like I say, a precedent has been set for zero lot line, and I, I'm simply asking for consideration of understand. that. understand. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Adam, do you have any comments to make based on the applicant's uh, comments? Yes, sir. A um, couple things. Uh, two, I'd like to say make it abundantly clear to the board and to the applicant that this is not a site plan review, that the only dimensions we're looking at are the visit variance for the five-foot setback which you all could grant or not grant or grant portions thereof. The other dimensions indicated in this site plan are strictly informational for you all. Um, it would still have to meet all the other dimensional requirements of, of it, of this zoning district, lake overlay, things of that nature. Uh, the second one is encroaching onto the other property was never brought up until this point in time. Um, I do not believe that's we can permit, even though you do own both parcels, I do not believe that's within the purview of this variance request to uh, permit building on one, from one property to another. Um, I have to double check on that, but even though he owns both properties at the moment, it has been said he intends to sell the properties. So, I'm not sure I understand what you just said. Could you he's say making, it one more time? He's, gonna say, he's asking for to allow you all to his, allow his building to overhang onto another oh, property. Okay. Right. And even though at the moment it is your property, uh, it is no. the intent is to, to sell off the property. Okay. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be that way. There is enough space, if we can do a zero lot line, that that encroachment would not be necessary. I was just trying to figure a way, if we do a zero lot line with such narrow lots, how can we keep the houses further away from the two lots that are on either side of these two lots, lot six and lot three? Yes, sir. I just want to make sure. So I will certainly do what the board recommends. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, but I've it's made clear that so you, so you could cite these houses so that the eaves do not overlap the I, lot lines with a zero lot line. I'm, I could I'm do talking that. about the lot lines, not not the setback, but the right. There would be no overlap of the eaves on, because the first two houses, the eaves do overlap. Right. <laughs> the eaves overlap the lot line. That's, uh, that it appears that way. It although I have to say, I've never seen a survey of those two houses. So I just, can't it, say it looks that way from when you just look at does. them from from, from the, the driveways. I mean, the, they're flopping over. And, and there is a wall <laughs> that goes right between them well, for privacy sake. Yeah. Sure. That allows people to, you know, live. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate your time. Okay. The next in the process of this is to give the opposition the opportunity to <coughs> speak, and I guess there's one, one opposition, J N and G Janine Hanna. And again, if when you come up, if you could just mention your name and address, please. Sir. Thank, uh, my name is Jay Hanna. My wife's Janine Hanna. Um, thank you for the opportunity to, to attend your uh, council meeting for a second time. So uh, glad we could pull this together. Um, I brought some pictures for the benefit of those who are not familiar with the property. Um, those are from our perspective. Um, I also brought a copy of the covenants, conditions, and restrictions, which we bought, you know, contingent on buying this house. We thought we were protected by those, as we did on the zoning laws. So... Um, we thought that when we bought, our, it was our understanding that our property was protected with the zoning laws and also the covenants and restrictions that I gave you. Um, um, we feel that the requested variance setback of zero, zero is unacceptable. And some of our neighbors are here in the room tonight. Um, you should have received emails and letters from all of the neighbors besides slots uh, five and six. So, you know, one and two is in opposition 
we're in opposition. We're both occupant owners in the neighborhood. Uh, lot six and seven are both in opposition. So five out of seven of the lot owners, all but Mr. Hammond, are in opposition. Okay. So we oppose this variance for many reasons. Uh, one, we we would not we'd be unable to maintain the rear or lake side of our property. We'd be unable to access the rear of our property uh, with landscape equipment, a skid steer to do landscaping. We would not be able to fill, maintain, remove, or replace our propane tank, which is on the left side looking at the lake. We would not be able to access watercraft or the dock for maintenance and upkeep. We have safety concerns related to inadequate access for medical, fire response teams in the event of an emergency requiring access to the rear of the property. We also have property damage concerns. Um, it took a lot to, keep the, to fix the drainage that was not fixed by the original uh, builder and developer when we moved in. Um, we've retained the, uh, the professional Council of a registered civil engineer that, spe uh, that specializes in storm drainage, and he said there's an in, in increased risk due to the drainage problems and potential for flood damage with less soil between the homes. We'd not be able to safely maintain the side of our property or even prop a ladder up for painting, cleaning, or gutter maintenance. Um, we have concerns that pushing the future houses too close together would most certainly result in a significant devaluation of our property. A couple of corrections. The eaves are not one foot. Look at the picture. They're more like two feet, okay? Um, and there's also in the, in the covenants restrictions, there's a minimum square footage, which we, you know, bought this house contingent to those covenants and restrictions. So, you know, one option for Mr. Hammond is to put one house on two lots and not cram them together or cram them to, uh, to the detriment of two of his neighbors. Um, there are strict covenants and conditions and restrictions governing Laurel Point subdivision. You've got the hard copy. Um, these CCRs clearly state that the location of all structures shall comply with the requirements of zoning and building ordinances applicable thereto. And that's Article 9, uh, Subsection 2. The CCRs do not state that an owner has the right to seek a variance or bill pursuant to a variance if one is granted. It would be a breach of contract for Mr. Hammond to build the houses as he's requested in Article 10, Section 1. Our house was constructed in compliance with the rules and regulations in existence at the time. We purchased the house in reliance that the rules and regulations would be followed when future houses were constructed and that all owners would comply with the covenants. We would have never purchased this home had we uh, known that the setbacks would all, be, all would be ignored for future uh, construction. Mr. Hammond shows you plans where the houses might go. It looks a lot different when the other two homes are right side by side. That looks like there's all the room in the world. Um, there's not a DHEC permit that's been granted to date. So really, we don't know where these houses are going. He's asking for the setback, a zero point, uh, you know, zero foot, zero inch setback. Those houses can slide up and down, okay? So there's no telling where the houses will actually go. Um, I can tell you 41 feet is more than a variance as far as the, uh, the setback goes for DHEC. Um, the current requirement sets a bad uh, precedent for future development in a neighborhood. The CCRs you hold in your hand also state that each lot shall pay $750 a year in homeowner's dues plus 15% interest on late or unpaid dues. To date, in the last nine years, Mr. Ammons paid zero, zero on each lot. So based on this experience, Mr. Hammond does not have a track record in doing what he says he's going to do. Again, Mr. Hammond has two lots. One option is to build one home on two. Why try to camp, cram two houses with a zero, zero lot line to the detriment of the adjacent properties? In conclusion, five of the seven lots are opposed to this variance. Two, will not be able to access or maintain the rear of the property will be landlocked. I didn't buy this home, my wife didn't buy this home, so that we, we would only be able to access it by barge. The current Oconee zoning requirements and the CCRs filed for the record with the Coney County Register of Deeds should be upheld. 
Otherwise, why do we have zoning and CCRs? This is not a positive legacy. It's not for us. Um, this property is not a mere investment for our, us and our family. We've enjoyed living here in Oconee County and we've made lasting memories with our family and children. We'd respectfully request your review and denial this, of this variance it would, as it would negatively impact our family and property. Appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the board members? Yes, yeah, uh, Mr. Hannon, you may have mentioned, I may, may have missed it. Uh, when did you purchase your home? What year? We purchased in 2008. 2008. As, as Mr. Hammond uh, pointed out, which I, there's something I don't, I'm not clear on. His name's clearly on those, uh, what you're holding in your hand as the developer. So I don't know. That, maybe that doesn't matter. But he's on, he's on the covenants and restrictions. So two houses were bought. He was trying to uh, do uh, shared ownership, got caught by the crash. These two houses went to auction. Neither one, you know, no one came to the auction. We bought the house as is. Um, but again, we thought it was, you know, concurrent with the, the zoning laws and also the covenants and restrictions. Thank you. Any other? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> As I understand it, one of your major concerns is access to the lake. Yes, sir. Are, are you saying you need to have him build a house further away so that you can use his property to get to the lake? What I'm saying is, is if he builds his house too close to our house, we are, we're pinched. We cannot access the back of our property at all. I mean, you think about it, five feet is shorter than this table. But what I'm saying is you're expecting him to provide room on his property then for you to get access. No, I'm expecting y'all to uphold the, the zoning requirements. I understand, I understand that part of it. I'm, on, I'm trying to understand. One of your main arguments is access to the lake. lake it's side. access and to the lake. It sounds to me like you're, you're wanting him to provide space on his property for you to have access to the lake. Is that, am I? No, sir. Um, I'm sorry. I, I didn't communicate. What we're, what we're talking about is if the zero lot line happens and he pushes a structure to the lot and our houses are five feet apart, there's no way to access the lake. Okay. There's no way to get furniture out of downstairs. There's no way to, you know, get a skid steer. There's no, you know, that buffer needs to be there. Um, you know, these houses are too close together as they are. Um, what happens if he puts a fence? Whoever owns that probably puts a fence on the lot line. Well, that, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to, under, I'm, I'm just yeah. trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to understand what, yeah. what your position is. I mean, typically you put a fence on your property, you don't put it on the lot line, you'd go eight inches over. But, you know, to your point, there is, uh, there in the, in the covenants and restrictions that you have in your hand, there are no fences allowed. Okay? Okay, um, that's fine. Okay, any, any other questions? Does, does the architectural review committee still have to review his plans? Yeah, that's another, plans? yeah, that's you know, another thing. Let's, just say, let's been, just say we, we were to grant it. Mm -hmm. or not grant it, either one, does he still not have to be to come under an internal review with your association? He does, and we, we've seen none of that. Um, you know, not participating in the HOA, dues, uh, not presenting his plans. You know, the first time I've seen this was, okay. you know, the request for variance. So, um, you know, it's different when you're an owner-occupant than not. Any other questions? <laughs> yes. Uh, it's hard to tell from uh, from the picture, uh, actually uh, uh, having viewed the property. What? Uh, how, how close is your house actually to the line? I'd have to look at our survey. Um, our house is, uh, you know, the survey goes between the houses that it jogs over. So I've got land where the two condensing units are and the propane tank, those are well within our property, so I'm thinking five feet. About five feet. Or better, yeah. So what would you estimate the uh, uh, proximity to the two houses? If he were to build it the way he's showing it on his plan, how close would you be to his proposed uh, dwelling? Well, we don't know, because we don't know what the DHEC permit, we don't know how, uh, how far up and down DHEC's gonna allow him to go, okay? We just know that he's asking to be on the lot line yeah. And if, and if it's adjacent to our house, that's the problem. That five feet's a problem. Plus, there's already dra considerable drainage installed there. It's going to be a drainage nightmare. 
I mean, it's going to be a mess. Um, so access, you know, getting getting to the back <coughs> of the property, get, being landlocked, being able to maintain our house. I mean, it's 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 a it's it's bad. Uh, apart from your suggestion that he combine the two lots and, and build one house, uh, do you have any other suggestions that uh, might be helpful to him? Well, um, you know, build a different configuration house, but you got to keep within the square footage of 2,200 square feet. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm asking, I, I can't tell him what to do with his property, but the, the only, you know, the only solution is not cramming it to your neighbors and encroaching on their property to their detriment. I mean, you can build a smaller house, you can move the houses up and down, you know, you can uh, build one house on two lots. I mean, there, there's all kinds of options, but um, we just, we don't care for the one that we're asking the forbearance. You know, it's like a, it's like a board game. You have rules of the game. Let's say we're playing the game of life, and you don't like the way the rules are going. You don't like the way the game's going. You know, why, why, why do we change the rules during the game? We, we, we signed on to, be, to play by the rules, and we played by them. We have one more question here, Marty. Uh, yes, Mr. Hanna, uh, one more time. Uh, you said you purchased your house in 2008. When you purchased the house, did it have the five-foot setback? Had, had our zoning gone into effect about the five-foot setback? Mm -hmm. At that point, or or was did you buy the house when there was no no criteria on that? I'd have to look back at the survey. Um, I do know that currently zoning laws are a five foot setback, right. um, and I think our law our our house is constructed with that setback. Um, but I'd, I'd I'd have to look at our survey. Okay. Adam, do you know? <clears throat> oh, since I don't know exactly when this house was was built, I'll just assume since two thousand it was in two thousand eight. Early 2008, I do not believe we had zoning. I believe it was late 2008 that we did have zoning, which would have included this. Question of, of staff. You, you made the point that, that our review of this case is really we shouldn't be looking at the plot. We should just be considering the five-foot setback or, the, or have no setback. That, that, could you just one point, could you just clarify that one more time as to what we shouldn't, I mean, we, we should not be looking at the plot, you said. We shouldn't consider that in our decision. Is, is that, am I hearing you correctly? This, for information, is, is a great visual to show you his concept of where the houses are going to go. However, your approval of the variance doesn't approve all the other okay. parameters in which we require. So gotcha. if, for instance, the vegetative buffer is not on here, just because let's say you all approve this tonight, it doesn't mean I wouldn't ask him to include the vegetative buffer in this or include where the driveway is. I just want to make it sure to the applicant as well as the board that while you may, let's just for conversation's sake, say approve this matter wholesale. Say, oh, great, you can have zero lot lines. It doesn't mean the site plan's approved. It doesn't mean tomorrow he can go start pushing dirt. Gotcha. He still has to go through our review process <coughs> and meet our, the rest of our development standards. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now, uh, Mr. Hammond, you have an opportunity to respond. Okay, thanks, sir. To any of the points that were made? <clears throat> I think. Uh, Mr. Hanna made a good point that it's not right to change the rules in the middle of the game. When the lots uh, were actually sold, there were no setbacks there. And my understanding on the purchase was the understanding I had when I showed you the community plot plans, that that's what the community would look like when the development was complete. And I'm in the same boat as him. I purchased lots there just like he did. Uh, he did purchase a, an auctioned house as is. So, uh, you know, that, that was what he was doing, and that was his decision. I, I didn't make that decision for him. But my point being that there were no setbacks when I bought the lots, and now there are. The rules of the game did change, and I'm faced with trying to figure out now how do I build the houses I intended to build originally uh, on those lots. And like I said, the five foot sit setback takes 25% of the width away from the lot. One other point too is DHEC doesn't really govern from the house front to the waterfront. The property boundary is the 800 mean sea level contour between Duke Energy and the lot owner. 
So DHEC doesn't govern there, and I talked with Brett, Brett Garrison with Duke Energy about that to be sure I understood, well, what is the setback from the lake to the house? Well, there's not one. So you have that opportunity to build it as far up the hill or down the hill as you'd like. The point was made by Mr. Hanna that there's some covenants, rules and covenants that right. you have that would be in violation. Could you speak to that? You're talking about my failure to pay? Well, no. I think there was some some uh, size of the property uh, and some of the, were there some covenants that were referred to that would be in violation if you proceed, if we granted this variance? Well, I, I didn't see in the covenants and restrictions where it mentions anything about setbacks. And I had a I brought my copy with me tonight, and I read it before I came here. I don't think there's any mention of that, y'all. So, okay, I um, may have just misunderstood. Okay, it's the okay. 2,200 Size square foot okay. footprint. All right, thank you. That, that's in the covenants and restrictions. Any board members have some questions? They want to make of Mr. Hammond. I have one. Yes. Uh, where would the septic system go? The septic systems on the two existing houses are on the uphill side. Okay. Ah, so okay. They have uphill. They, and, and, what do they have? They grinder do, pumps have or something to pump That's them right. up? They do. Okay. Um, and I talked to Brett Garrison about that with Duke Energy. He says that there's they have n no governance over a septic drain field, you know, in front of a house if you wanted to put one there. Now, most people uh, wouldn't want it. The, there, uh, but. Uh, the state of South Carolina does, though. Okay. Okay. They, their current uh, regulations are 75 feet. So okay, so that's why they have them uphill then from, because the house is 69 feet deep, and then there's the distance of the front of the house to the water. So it, it does meet that restriction there. So. Okay. Well, one, other, one other question. Did, uh, did you, uh, uh, when you uh, drew the uh, plan that you have here, did you consider taking that uh, house on lot four and staggering it like the two houses that were there previously? On lot four. In other words, get, in other words, move that one back so that it's right. 20 feet. The problem is you can't move it back because the lot gets skinnier well, and the 40, you can't, I'd have well, to be building on well, no, Mr. Hanna's lot then. No, no, if you move back, you could you could make an adjustment in your own property line in the center there to move it over to adjust for the house. Oh, I see what you're saying. So yeah. adjust between lot four and five. Yes. Yeah. And, I, and, that, and move, it, move it back so that it's completely uh, staggered. I could do that. I could do that. Now, I, I just can't say how far back I could move it. Um, see, they're... They already have their houses, and I'm just trying to build two more like the ones they have, and I feel kind of pushed out of the picture. And I do recognize what Jay is saying about I have failed to pay, and I have, but I've lost a lot of money there, and I'm still, no pun intended, underwater with these lots. I know that's not a matter you're interested in, but he did bring it up, and I want to represent myself in the matter. It is true, but there's a reason for it. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay. Um, so now I guess there's an opportunity for public comment uh, aside <coughs> from speakers. I'm not sure I understand that it says that, but I'm not sure what that means. Go ahead. No, I believe no, you. Okay, just ignore that. that. Perhaps okay. that was uh, erroneously entered. Okay, so now it's our, our opportunity as a board to discuss what we've heard. Who would like to um, speak first? Uh, what do you think? I'll say something. I, I'm kind of conflicted. Um, I agree that when the zoning enabling ordinance was put in and we put put basic restrictions on all properties, uh, namely the five foot setback, that's the new rules, and uh, um, it really was intended to for everyone to abide by that. That said, um, uh, this fellow's got a problem in that he was trying to trying to build a, um, uh, build a community that has very similar houses on very narrow lots. And uh, for me, there is an issue of grandfathering there. What, you know, how restrictive should we be in him in being able to build that way? I guess another thought I have is I don't think we get involved in covenant issues. 
the, the lot owners have to deal with the covenants. We don't. We should not be listening to covenant issues. Uh, majors they may be. That's not our job. We need to be looking at what are the rules the county has for this development. If I got that right, yes, sir. Uh, um, same with DHEC. Uh, we, we don't administer DHEC rules. That's up to the property owner to, to administer DHEC rules. Um, so that's my confliction. The, you know, and, and, and just listening to what you said about the grandfathering, part of me says that any time that we put in zoning, that's going to affect anybody's opportunity that they have for that property going forward regardless. So that just, that's a nature of the beast, you know, so right. we can't. Got new rules. Yeah, we've got, got new agree. rules. And, got new rules. And I think our, our mission as a board to say, do the, is there a reason those new rules shouldn't fit for this particular circumstance? And I guess that gets down to obviously the criteria that we're going to I think use. That's well put. <coughs> yeah. I, I'd sure like to hear what other people have to say. I'm yeah, well, sure. I, I, honestly, I, I kind of felt the same way you started with as far as the grandfather. That's one reason I wanted to find out when Mr. Hanna purchased this house, if, if he was under that or not. Um, one of the things, you know, the, the little training um, that we got that I think Adam was sent out or Bill sent out to us this week, there was a prime example in there about uh, where somebody where somebody was, was talking about when, when something like this occurs, just exactly like you said. You know, it, it's... If somebody had owned those lots for 50 years and the rules, rules changed, we wouldn't go back and say, well, 50 years ago, you could burn tires out there if you yeah. wanted to, you know. <laughs> yeah, you right. can't do that. So I, I think that, that as we look at the grandfathering, I think we do have to realize there, and I understand about the Great Depression of 2008, but I think we have to look like, look at also that there's been time that, that, that you know, there was a time that passed or, or there was a time that when the lots were purchased that, that something could have been done with them. Um, I also believe that there there are ways to make this fit. Uh, it it may be as as uh, has already been discussed, shifting the shifting them around on the lots a little bit more. And so I think that that if that's if there's another reasonable way to uphold what the zoning says and keep a five foot setback, that you may have to change the the. The, the houses a little bit. I know you've got a square footage that you've got to maintain, but you may have to change, making making change the configuration of the house, the footprint of the house, uh, to make it fit. And so I, I do believe that that that's it, it's not like we're locking somebody completely out. Mm -hmm. There's a way to make it fit. Mm -hmm. Other comments. It, uh, one of the concerns I, I agree with the uh, uh, fact that it was original development it was established way back before zoning. Uh, my main concern here is that with the two houses adjacent to one another so close, I think uh, from a privacy standpoint and from a fire hazard standpoint, I think it creates a, a problem that uh, uh, that we need to we need to consider. Yeah, and there's there's a reason for the for the zoning. Yeah, the reason the reason place. for the setback yeah. uh, for the most part is uh, for safety, uh, fire prevention, and things like that. Uh, to a large degree, and in this case, you, you're ba we're basically uh, eliminating that if we vote for the variances as, uh, as it's uh, currently stated. And I, I, I would uh, agree that if the if the house could be shifted in some other direction, you know, farther back and staggered so that they were all the houses were staggered, that, that there might be a way to work out a uh, uh, a plan that uh, he, he could build on them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if it required uh, uh, some variance at that point, the other the other uh, issue that we have is there's still two or three other uh, lots on there that are probably undersized that they're are going to have to be built on at some point in time, and we'll be setting precedents for those. Other other comments, Wendy, do you have any? No, I can make a house sit on this lot. And stay within the guidelines, so I'm having a hard time grandfathering them. Could you say it again, Gwen? I didn't hear your last comment. Well, I just feel like you can get an architect to design a house that will fit on these lots and stay within the guidelines we have to live with. Any other comment? So it, it's my recommendation as chair that we deal with each one of these criteria individually rather than together if could I get a 
a motion to the effect of how we want to deal with those from the board? We, we, uh, we uh, consider the criteria individually. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Okay. Pass. So what I'll do is to read the criteria in the positive and then we'll be looking for a motion for that as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a positive item with a second and then we'll have our discussion and then vote. We'll do that for each item. Do I have it right? So, sort of? Gotcha. Okay. So I'd like to have a motion that there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property. And could I have a motion to the affirmative to that? So moved. Is there a second? No second? Remember, we still have an opportunity for a discussion after the second. I'll second. Okay. Discussion. For, uh, going back to what we were talking about before, I would, I would go along with the idea that the original development uh, has caused a, a situation where it would be extremely difficult for them to, uh, to build on it without, uh, without a variance. I second it just so we could have discussion. Um, right. I guess I come down to kind of where Gwen's at and others have said it. I think why well, you can't duplicate the two houses that are on lots, was it? Two four and three? five. Four and five. Uh, you can't duplicate those houses. You ought to be able to get something that's pretty close, <coughs> still maintain the appearance of the community, and fit within the lot line. So um, I would plan to vote no on this motion. Okay. But I. I seconded to gotcha. get to the discussion. Sure, I appreciate that. <coughs> Any other discussion? So do you want to make a, a motion? Well, the motion's already uh, uh, made. You have to call. We seconded the motion. We discussed vote, I think I you need okay, to call Okay, so, uh, so we have to turn it. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, you're right. So um, all in favor of the motion that says that there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property, raise your right hand. Those against, raise your right hand. Okay, so that's defeated. Okay, so that, that means that since we the first criteria was not passed, that the motion has been defeated for the uh, application for variance. Okay, so now we're on to anything else, Adam, that we need yes, to sir. do? Yes, sir. Okay. So we're now on this, this the special exception for the second one on the agenda today. And this is a special exception request for application SC19, bunch of zeros and one, to allow for a non residential use in Lake Overlay District for a tax parcel. 136-00-03-092 on Waterfall Road, Seneca. The proposed use is expansion of a recreational vehicle park. Okay, so the first step in this process is the statement of matter before the board for staff. Adam? Yes, sir. There's approximately 18 acres on High Falls Road that the applicant wishes to create in recreational vehicle park at. Um, this is a special exception hearing as is required by the Lake Overlay District. Uh, this means that all non-residential uses have to come before the Board of Zoning Appeals within 750 feet of the 800 mean sea level line. Uh, this is a non-residential use. Um, the applicant has provided site plans and designs and his ideas of what's to be put on there. Uh, you also have a number of letters in your backup material as well regarding the project as well from the citizens of the county. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the next opportunity is then for the applicant to speak um, uh, as to why you're requesting the variance. Special exception. Who's, well, this, I'm sorry, the special exception. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, before we do, can I just ask a question? Used to when we, because we have a large group here tonight, and I know everyone wants, wants to speak. Didn't we? Don't we have a rule that if you speak as a group, you have five minutes? If you speak as an individual, you have three minutes. 
I believe that's policy, sir. Yes, I don't policy. believe it's, uh, I believe that can be policy. Um, yeah. uh, yes, yes, sir. But you can also, I can be as strict with the time or you just let me know how. I, how I was just, I, I just, I didn't know if, you know, I knew we had done that in the past because when you have a lot of, if you have a lot of people that want to speak, sometimes people feel like that, that somebody's getting more time than others or not only about. Yeah, yeah, don't want anybody. While they're okay. speaking, I'll take the policy manual. Thank you. Yes, and if you could give your name and address. My name is Carol Belcher, and I live at 277 Waterfall Road, Seneca, South Carolina, 29672. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you ask for something else? No, just, just ah. whatever you'd like to say in, in oh, favor okay. of the I've variance. never done this your, before, this so request. I, I may need to be prodded a little to get what you, you need. We have, we have owned, my family has owned land on Waterfall Road for over 45 years. A parcel of the land that my father bought had a trailer park on it, and the people were afraid the new buyers would move them off, which my dad said no, and people just started coming. So the park that he and my mother had enlarged out, they were in there when restrictions and codes and stuff were almost non-existent. As they built out through the years, there's areas of their existing park that is laid out better. We were called to come to my dad due to sickness and we had just built the house. They thought we were gonna live in forever because his job moved around it. And so we ended up coming up here and I went to John Neville's Every time I come up, I wanted to buy this piece of land. And any of you that knows John, he didn't like selling his property. And so I just always go, and he said, if it's ever sold, you can have it, Elaine. So what happened was, uh, he called my dad. My dad got in touch with me. John was dividing the property, giving some to his sisters. And so I purchased the piece that we're talking about. And then Scott Rye, the uh, builder, came in. We've had a multitude of builders, people wanting me to give right-of-ways because there was no right-of-ways to either of the properties uh, that have been put in on Waterfall. And so um, I told him I would not sell a right-of-way, but I would trade properties evenly. And so in turn, but mine had to, he had to deal with, with uh, Crescent and anybody else and make sure that they were able for me to put campers, RVs on there. We're not talking a regular RV lot. And in these paperworks, people seem to want to um, kind of compare what we're talking about to what's existing in my and my parents, when it's old, my mother's 88 years old. When she passes away, I inherit that property. And at that time, I would bring it up to the quality of the one we're looking to put in right now. So Crescent lifted their uh, residential restrictions, and we weren't aware of this. For, for Scott Rye to build the peninsula or the other piece, I'm not sure what he calls it, but he needed land from me and so we switched out property making sure each one was covered in what we were supposed to be doing that's what i understood because there would be no peninsula or there would be no other piece of property over there had i not made that deal and i would have never made it in a million years if it wouldn't have gone through and uh, so he built his, and that was fine. And then um, I've had some health, to, health issues, diagnosed with lupus. My dad had Alzheimer's, and I just stuck it on the back burner. But when we first started drawing out what we were going to put in there to be separate, then what happened was we turned it in. We were working with Steve Yoder, and we turned it in down at the planning wherever it was, the office was. And my husband and Steve went. Then all at once, when we're coming in against some stuff, and this was 
several years ago, quite a few years ago. Um, then we were notified, Mr. Ellenberg went in and he was gonna get a temporary light pole. And a young gentleman by the name of Josh in planning said that he, we did not have one on file. And I said, we absolutely do have one on file that dates back years. And I said, um, I said, I have a copy of it. He told me, he said, you're gonna need to send me a certified copy. I said, I only have one copy and it, it's laminated. He said, send that copy, I'll return it to you. And he said, uh, and uh, send one regular mail. So I did it the very next day. So two weeks went by, three, hadn't heard from Josh. So he came back and told me that we needed now to work within the new guidelines that since I could not prove that this was the one I turned in years ago, I said, you're the one that needs to look it up and what you have. So this has not been an easy go for us at all. I can tell you that. Well, anyway, so we dealt with the illness and things and so then got back and came into this and then we had no idea of this particular rule for the county now. And so what we are planning for our property, we've had people who are, uh, you know, people have sat on boards with Clemson and different people and they're looking, some of them have million dollar buses and they would like to have a place to set it up or part models, which is an RV, but it is, it is more homey than just a regular trailer with slide outs. I brought some examples of them here today. And so these, some of these sell way up money-wise. So when it comes to the peninsula that Scala built, when you look out from that, uh, the side that we're on, the only thing that they are really going to see if we develop it is very minimal, and it will be three acres of land. But on that three acres of land, I don't know if you have our map or not, but the three acres, it's like 3.2 or 3.4, that land has been, we've had an engineer working on it, and it has been laid out into 17 campsites. Those 17 campsites, each one is going to have their own uh, the line, uh, the uh, waterfall, I mean waterfront, they may have 50s. We have one that has 100 and some out there. And so, uh, and so that's the way it's lined up. So they can come in with really nice stuff. They were gonna put greenery that grows tall and creates hedges between each camper. The, um, the, the RVs that are in there can have a patio, uh, outdoor kitchen. There's several things we're going to offer to them. So it is going to be a high-end clientele for that particular area of our park. And uh, so in these three areas, the other thing we're looking at is in part of the property is a swimming pool with just a lazy river that floats around. And inside there is going to be a small laundromat and a store for people just to pick up small items when they need it. And uh, there is a smaller restaurant now planned for up there for like burgers. They can come in their jeans or come and get stuff and carry it to their boats and that type thing on the land. So we're trying to create an all-inclusive. And uh, one of their concerns has been we have golf carts. Well, we're not the only ones with golf carts. I mean, there's three uh uh, there's three de uh, camping developments on Waterfall Road right now. We also have from Piney Ridge, we have people comes over all the time on golf carts. They've driven down our road. They actually created some damage that we know of 
absolutely. And their development that they felt on part of it was our camper. Now, I'm not saying our camper hasn't done it. I'm one of those that raised five children. And if the Sunday school teacher makes a mention that the kids have been rowdy, I know mine was one of them. Could, you, know, you, could I mean, you try to summarize your, your, your comments maybe in the next minute or so? Okay, okay. thank you. Anyway, what we are planning is a very upscaled uh, development. And um, it's like nothing that's ever been placed in this park before. We right now have doctors and lawyers and we have multiple people that's in our park that's bought land in these developments of those over there. I, and you know, some of them are still in there right now. So I don't have a, we don't have a problem with that. And so our thing is, we're trying to create something and it's not just so high end. And then once my mother is no longer with us and I've inherited the other property, I'm going to bring, go through and we're going to redo it and bring it in so it goes with what we already have in the new part of the campground. And uh, it's so it's, um, that's been what we've been working on for a long time. And uh, so there's very little of our campground will be seen at all from their campground. If you go look on the other side of theirs, they're looking in High Falls, they're looking in Mabel Crows, and uh, some really rough property compared to ours. They've gone through, there is some things on my mother, but with me being sick, I haven't been able to do, but I'm back at it now. We have three people with porches and stuff that's already been given a 30-day notice. Now it was given two weeks ago. The They've got to come into compliance. Um, excuse me. So, so we're asking that we get um, uh, the special exception. Yes, thank you. I, and we're asking that we get that, and and hope you will understand that it will be something. And my people spend money in this county when they're in here like you would not believe. Hey, could I, could some of, are there any board members that you want to have any questions of the applicant at this point? Okay. <clears throat> so then the next step, thank you so much. We appreciate your comments. And then after the opposition has a chance to speak, then you'll have a chance to come back okay. and, and respond to that. Thank you. Uh, Adam, is there anything that you want to say regarding the applicant's comments that has been presented? Uh, nothing stands out, sir. Okay. We are now, we're now want to hear from the opposition and, and help me, I guess, do this in a manageable process because you guys don't want to sit there any longer than we do, I'm sure. So the question is, is there somebody that can be a spokesperson? Okay. And, and then if maybe if, if other people have something additive you want to have bring to the, to the table to speak, but if it's a, a rehash of what we heard already, I just ask that that just let the first applicant cover the common ground amongst it, if that's okay with you. Okay. And again, we can have your name and address, please. Yes, sir. My name is Kevin Polly. My primary address is 105 Linkside Drive in Taylor's. We own lot five. My wife and I, Christine, own lot five on the Peninsula properties. We did receive a notice of this meeting tonight. And I also uh, have a very good friend in, uh, who is the president. I'm the secretary of the POA. The president of the POA could not be here tonight, Janet Albury. She is a uh, adjoining lot owner, lot six, and she is out of town tonight. So I'm speaking in conjunction with some notes that we have prepared. Uh, kind of going through a lot of the other letters that were copied to us that you should have on file as well. Mm -hmm. I also provided you with an overlay picture of the proposed RV uh, site build. Uh, it, okay. Actually, the pictures that I have, though, are on the actual plat, I think is more illustrative. Uh, I actually overlaid that picture onto the plat of the property to give a better, I think, idea of how it would look and how it uh, impacts our current communities. Uh, <clears throat> so 
In response to the code and the exceptions, 38.7.2, as I understand it, says that the board may grant the exception only if you find evidence that all of the general requirements that were listed were met. And we do not feel that these are adequately met in the request as given, specifically with the intent and spirit of the natural beauty, the limitation of secondary impacts, and the general enjoyment of the lake by those that are adjoining these properties. First of all, the proposed development, we hope that it's not going to be in accordance with the current RV status, but my understanding after talking with Mr. Huggins is that if this is required, there's very limited oversight that could go on from your perspective, and this was from him, not from me, regarding what actually is put in place after the exception is given. And that is a great concern, the densities of non-owner occupied properties that are, again, when you own a property, you have vested interest and you have desired upkeep. There's an investment there that's beyond even having an RV that is placed on a site and rented. The impact to the properties also are considerable in that if you look at the site plan for the restaurant, which in the initial information that we received was 1,500 to 3,500 square feet, which by 10 to 12 feet per occupant, if somebody is there, we can mention 100 to 200 people at any one time. In addition, if the pool is to be open to the public, it would also create significant impact on Waterfall Road. There's already significant impact, especially during the summer months with, as has been mentioned, 91 sites there at High Falls County Park and others. So in order to be in harmony with the current existing one plus acre lots of sizable investments that were done at both the peninsula and I believe there are some members of Timber Cove here as well, which is just across the street, this would be a significant impact to the properties. There is some concern as well about, as you see, I actually had another picture of what has already been clear cut on that existing peninsula that was certainly above and beyond what we have been allowed or would consider doing on our lots in addition to what Duke and Crescent had set as guidelines for the natural beauty and forestation of the properties that were to be there. And I don't believe the existing request for that kind of density of RV sites would allow for anything but continued deforestation that would, again, significantly impact. You also look, if you could, across the point, across the cove there, there is actually one of our existing homeowners, I believe, sites with their dock that is very close in proximity as it goes out into the cove that would be very closely aligned. So I don't believe that this would be totally hidden. The existing line as it sets to the peninsula itself, even if you had a 10-foot fence with 40-foot high Leland cypresses, would be very difficult to stay within noise ordinance guidelines, in my opinion, with the accompanying music and other activities that go on from restaurant and pool with public access ongoing. We have had issues already as well, even though we only have three homes that are two being built and one that is currently there of significant episodes of trespass, both from golf carts and from foot traffic, that has required us to place extra boulders and other things blocking this gate of a gated community. So again, access across that common property line would also be of great concern to us. We are mostly concerned, again, about preservation of the revenue that has been spent in buying these beautiful lots that are wonderfully positioned on the lake, and I believe they are a great use of the land that is there, and we're very hopeful that many more of us can build on these properties. Unfortunately, with this proposal, there's already been some discussion about folks who have some reservations about their desires to build based on this proposed new development. I would also just ask again that the whole reason, as we understand it, for the Lake Overlay District was to, again, to preserve what was there in a manner that's both aesthetically and naturally maintained positions, and that's why, again, we heard from others about maintaining setbacks and other things with the environmental impacts. Again, 
we, we maintain a, a, a water uh, supply from this lake as well. So the other things that are accompaniment with high density RVs that all have their own toilet, toilet facilities as well as possible dump station and other impacts are significant, we believe. And for this reason, we would ask at this time that you would strongly consider not approving this motion. Okay, any questions from the, the board at this point? Okay, um, now is there anybody that would like to speak that has something in addition to say? Yes, sir, or sure. Again, just say your name and address, please. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Bob Brownfield. I live at 8070 Wackaby Drive in Myrtle Beach. I own lot 11 in the peninsula. And my opposition to this is not only all of the things that Kevin has relayed to you, but basically it just doesn't meet the zoning requirements. It's certainly not in harmony with the intent and spirit of the, of the comprehensive plan, even though the comprehensive plan is still a, a work in progress. And <clears throat> the zoning codes that exist uh, have been uh, developed based on the, the guidance out of the master plan, I mean the comprehensive plan at this point. <clears throat> Chapter 12 of the uh, Oconee County Ordinance addresses noise. And it says specifically <clears throat> that any noise uh, it would be a cons a considered unlawful and nuisance and prohibited. This would be noise of ordinary kind that would, would interfere with the lifestyles of any normal sensitivity person. Okay, so there's no doubt in my mind that 54 uh, RVs or trailers or whatever happens to be in there with, with children and a, and a kid's swimming pool with water guns that's proposed, uh, can there be any doubt that there's going to be an awful lot of noise, of course. In addition to that, there, the potential for all of them to have golf carts. Uh, this, <laughs> it could be a, a, a tragedy on, on Waterfall Road with all the, the teens and probably uh, even, even kids that are not even of age uh, driving those things. But anyway, <clears throat> then uh, it's not in, in accordance with the, the ordinance, Chapter 38, which says uh, the purpose of that is to protect the pro property and lifestyles of all Oak County residents, citizens. Uh, the lifestyle of, of the folks in uh, the peninsula and, and uh, surrounding communities is certainly not in consonance with an RV park. So it, it doesn't meet that. And this is something that's, I'll say, mostly for the uh, benefit of the audience because I know you folks know what your BZA requirements are. But, <clears throat> you know, and it says it must meet uh, all of the, the four Cri uh, criteria of, of your plan. So, and <clears throat> First thing it says, it must be in accordance with the comprehensive plan, which it is not. It must be consistent with the spirit, purpose, and intent of the district in which this special exception is being requested. Now, the district now is, is a, a no-control district. However, I'm, I'm guessing that as the, uh, the zoning gets more and more mature, will probably be a, a lake residential district. And... Of course, then you have the additional requirements of the lake overlay, which is not really a district, but there are additional restrictions of the lake overlay. And the lake overlay says it's there to, to protect uh, and to deal with lands that, that the county considers of, quote, extraordinary value. Now, I don't know if that makes extraordinary dollar value or a value to the county in terms of, of lifestyle or what, but, but clearly it, that's there. So, uh, <clears throat> and I don't, I don't believe that, uh, that this park would, would uh, enhance the 
extraordinary value of the property, certainly of the peninsula, lake of the peninsula. Uh, number two says it's got to be in the best interest of the county. My take is if it's not in accordance with the comprehensive plan, it can't be in the best interest of the county. It'd be counter to the, to the best interest of the county. And third, it says it must be in harmony and appropriate in appearance or of the existing or intended character of the general facility. Clearly, it is, it is not in appearance at all of the residential area that we have there. And <clears throat> suitable in terms of traffic and safety, congestion, and hazards is the other concern. And again, with the potential for 58 golf carts and, and kids running around, uh, I think that's just a, a recipe for disaster. So, okay. I thank All right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Was there someone else that wanted to speak? I think you were first. Yes, you're. I don't know your name, so. <laughs> And again, be respectful to try to limit to just new topics if we haven't heard, please. <coughs> Thank you for listening. Your name uh, and address. My name is Robert Townsend, and my lovely bride is there with me, George Ann. And currently, we're at 120 Dry Gulch Trail in Seneca. And we sir, are. Could you speak into the microphone better? I, I can't I'm hear sorry. You. I'm sorry. Uh, I it's hear Robert you. Townsend and George Ann. We're currently at 120 Dry Gulch Trail in Seneca. And we are beginning to build our dream home out here at the peninsula. We bought this lot about a year and a half ago or almost two years ago. And at the time, you know, it was presented as being an upscale, very nice community on a beautiful lake. And if, I'm not sure if you can see on here, but, but at any rate, <clears throat> our lot faces this proposed park. And I know I've, the, the house that we're in now is on Lake Harville, and I can sit there at night, and there's neighbors across the cove further apart than this, and I can sit there and hear them making normal conversational tones without them even yelling or hollering. That's like that. I've been around 75 years. 24 years in the Navy, I've been around water and everything else. But I'm, I spent all of my money and my wife spent her life savings to get this lot and to get this house beginning to build. And we still had to borrow money. The loss of value of this thing would be dramatic. I mean, I'm, I almost would hate to tell you what I paid for what we paid for that lot. A third of a million dollars. And I promise you that if this thing goes through and every little personal watercraft and conversation, folks coming in and out, it will be just a big shame. Now, this very nice lady right here, and, I, and she has my sympathies and everything, mentioned that she even admitted that she had children and a few of them were a little rowdy. She also mentioned that as things are now, that she's had golf cart traffic and all of that. So my problem is the loss of the property value and the noise. Mm -hmm. Now, I would not have an objection if she, instead of building this park, if she wanted to develop a high-end residential area with one-acre lots on that peninsula similar to what we have, 
I would I would listen to that and consider that with a lot more favoritism than what she's got planned. I mean, I, I just think that they could do a development like that instead of Dollywood Jr. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Oh, sorry. I pointed at two people at the same time. I guess. Okay. <laughs> Should I yield my place? Next. <laughs> I am Richard Ellison. My wife Mandy and I own lot number three. Uh, we, much like Robert, excuse me, we are living at 122 West Barkdale in Salem. We, like Robert, have a house under construction. We're past the point of no return. Uh, we share the same uh, concerns that he has. Uh, what I would like to bring, and I'll leave this paper with you, um, some of the things to consider is that uh, the land development company asking for this variance uh, has been notified by Parker Poe uh, attorneys that they were in violation of lake ordinances by uh, doing clearing of the 25-foot vegetative buffer. That was from Crescent Land and Timber. Um, as a Mr. Huggins with Crescent Land and Timber is where we got this information. Be glad to leave this with you, but that is illustrative of some of the things that can go on and have gone on. We do not know the current state of that. Uh, Crescent Land and Timber was disbanded, and now Lake Services has it. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is personal experience. Um, we have had, we've been building since December, uh, and we have had three instances of having to call the Sheriff's Department because of trespassers on the property. We have a lot of equipment out there. We have a lot of supplies out there. And the latest one was last night at 8.45 p.m. It's dark. And our cameras that are on the lot picked up trespassers and the Coney County Sheriff's Department responded. Uh, we have counted traffic via the gang cameras down the private road. And in one day, which was last Sunday, Easter Sunday, there were 11 separate individuals that used the road for their own purposes. Um, we too are concerned about safety, security, and enjoying a quiet lake life. This is our retirement home. We don't plan on building another one. And we have invested a lot in this. It, it is our life savings too. And it, it represents a threat to that. Um, and we, we are absolutely opposed to any further development that is not single family residential. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we didn't mention this. But please, please come to the modium, podium, modium, podium. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to mention uh, for your edification that the peninsula is a gated community. So when he says they have trespassers, they're they're trying to bypass our, our system. And so that's what's going on there. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, now you get a chance. Hi, my name is Stacy Keeler. I'm a full-time resident at 106 Pine Ridge Point Drive. And given that I think that I would hope that the purpose of the planning committee is to be um, responsible, resourceful, um, reactive, planful, it seems to me we're missing one major component as we even consider this, and that is an understanding of the plans for High Falls Park and the expansion of that park. So if there is someone qualified to speak to that tonight, I think that's a helpful consideration. If the rumors are true, we will have lots of wonderful public use space for people and families to come in and continue to enjoy this natural area. That in and of itself could have the potential to increase all of the concerns that we have around safety, but that's a public space that we can all enjoy. It will be done, again, I'm sure responsibly, sustainably, and that's something I hope we can all look forward to. But it seems it must be considered in the context of what the evils are also proposing. Is there someone here who can speak to the plans for the park expansion? Adam, do you know anything about that at all or could speak to that? 
I can't speak to the High Falls Park expansion. Okay. It's still in the nascent planning phases. Okay. So, so it is not a foregone conclusion. I, I can't speak to it at all, ma'am. I'm sorry. So I'll, I'll share what I've heard because if it's for lack of something better. So the park, and we heard this from the new park manager directly, so to the extent that he is in the know, he is a new park manager. He was promoted from South Cove. The current park facility is going to be turned over for complete day use. And the peninsula, let me get my eyes right here. I don't know if I can go up to that complicated graphic and point to it, but going down Waterfall Road and veering off to the right will be new park property for all of the overnight campers. So there will be an increased number of overnight lots, which is, again, I'm sure they'll be modern. I'm sure they'll be well equipped. It'll be great. Um, allow those families to enjoy that peacefully. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any any other speakers? So now you have an opportunity. Yes. One more. Oh, one more. I'm oh, sorry. Um, my name is Margie Horst, and I am a property owner in Timber Cove. And we were notified of this on the 23rd, so two days ago. Um, this was just made known to us. And my only comment or addition to what you've heard is that this has been approved for non-residential use. And if the current park is an example of what we can anticipate, I think, I could be wrong, but it looks like you have, am I wrong? It looks like, it looks very permanent just due to the um, porches that are built on, the sheds that are added on, the parking garages. It looks, if the new park is anything like that, then I, I just feel like there needs to be a differentiation between what's residential and what's non-residential. That's it. Okay. Other than the fact that it does sound like this is already being promoted and you're taking um, phone calls to lease the property already. Um, it's on the Facebook site. You have a Facebook site as well as your brochure. Oh, excuse me. Was, you know, just, please not have a conversation back and forth. You'll get your opportunity to okay. rebut. Okay. That's fine. It just it appeared to be that this was already being promoted on social media so that if you were interested in the expansion to the park, to the existing ID's campground, I believe is what it's called today, um, that you could call a number and potentially reserve a space. So I just want to make sure that we're following the right protocols and sequencing to, okay. to move forward. Okay. That would be it. <laughs> Do we have, we have one more? Yes, yes please. Okay. And I appreciate your willingness to go with the format of not having everybody speak for a long time and just doing the, the net differences. Thank you, Mark Gustafson. I live at 6845 Lisa Lane, Sandy Springs, Georgia. Also have a residency in, on Briar Court here in Seneca and have for 10 years. And we're lot 23 in the peninsula and plan to, my wife and I, Carol, who's here, plan to build on that. And 23 is on Necker Court and it faces the peninsula. And if you notice that peninsula there, right here, how lush the forest tree is, it's now been totally mowed down where they cut down virtually every tree on that without approval. And I think that it's so they could help justify building something. One of the issues we've been facing a lot is from our lot, we'll come there and we'll swim off our peninsula there. Again, our lot is right here. There's constantly boat traffic going into the corner there for their RVs and then they'll tie up on the peninsula. So even though if they don't have docks out there, if they have all these RV sites, they'll just be tying up boats all along that. And she mentioned that the restaurant will be a great place for people to come tie up their boat and come grab a burger and fry as well. Last thing we want is a whole bunch of boats tying up to grab a burger and fries. So we already have boat traffic to deal with from them this would ex exasperate the problem significantly. 
Okay. Questions? Thank you. Did, by the way, are there any questions of the board from from the opposition that's spoken so far? One additional comment I forgot to mention about the golf carts, even though it's come up a bunch, we keep having issues with the, you'll see the tracks from the golf carts along the water shoreline going up into the, up into our property, or they'll put black electric, electrician tape on the gate, take the carts in and drive around. I was up here two weekends ago the lot next to us is cleared and started to build. There's a golf cart on it. The gate's open because the tape's on it. And I asked them, oh, I haven't met you. Are you are the new landowners? Because the cart's in the middle of their lot. I said, no, no, we're next door at the RV. We're just checking things out. And I'm like, hello? And it's like, you know, you shouldn't be here. So I took the tape off and they were like, you know, they could get out because they're big enough vehicles. Hoping their vehicle's too small to trigger the gate to let them out, but they could get out. Anyway, okay, thank, thank you. you. Now, as an applicant, would you like to respond? Okay. mother and my feathers got a little ruffled when the man brought up my children. I was talking about my kids when they were three and four years old and toddlers who misbehave and give hard times to people. I have a, a son that teaches at Clemson. I've, he's been offered at another school head of the English department. I've got a girl that deals with a multi-billion dollar business. So I did not raise children that misbehaved or gave me any trouble. So for that, I stand up for my children. Um, there's been several things here said today, and there were several things in the letters that was written that we verified because no one from that development has come to us and knocked on our door and said, there's a problem. Um, there's been, we contacted, we were told in these letters that the sheriff's department had been called multiple times about noise from us. Uh, we contacted the sheriff today and we wanted just to verify how many phone calls he had had. He had zero. They're complaining of having somebody trespass in their camp last night. In my park, there were three trailers and all of them in their 60s and 70s. I don't think they're going to be out walking around or doing stuff in their neighborhood. Now, our park, and usually at, all through the year, we only work at maximum capacity of 40%. We have never had 100% capacity filled in our park at any time. There are three holidays that occurs when our park is full. We are not opening up the swimming pool and the other things to the neighbors and to people surrounding us. They mentioned that we were taking money. We have never taken a dime on that property. There is no one with a lot signed up to anyone. We told them of our plans. We were seeing what the market and the calls we would get, but we have never done that. And I can, you can verify that with my attorney. Uh, we just don't do that. I mean, if something happened, it didn't happen, then I don't want to have to go and tell people that. But we've asked if they want to put their name on a list, and this was before we even got this, that we, if we'd all passed and we got it through, we would give them a call. That's all we've said. So we've never done that. We've never tied anybody. So in our part, through the week, we have probably, if you're looking at our park, a minimum of 3% of our park that's existing right now in use at any given time. This is a park where people, and she's suggesting, well, get it, we already have people. I have people by the hundreds call and want to come into my park. I do not want a transient park. I do not want people coming in at night or through the day. We're very secure in what we do. We've never had our 
park and anything stolen we have a very regimental rules and regulations even this the sheriff said to my husband today he said we have never been called to your fault in 45 years they have never been called to the bar now he said except when I did the calling and I had a camper that had drunk too much and I had him removed from my premises and I evicted him the next day I do not run a party campground if you're wanting to party you're at the wrong place because I don't do that and uh, there's certain things we have to allow because that's code and law with South Carolina but we are and our law our land and they they grant us uh, permits for our porches those porches are not set even in the ground if somebody if I have to evict one I can get my guys to come in in 45 minutes have every have the camper out down on the ground and Mr. Ellenberg pulling it up the road so I can re release that lot. There's not anything in there that's permanent. So a lot of things that are being said, and my husband may think I've missed something, and I may have, uh, the golf carts. They claimed in here on some of that that they recognized our golf carts. Well, I'm telling you, I've been around them for years, and I still can't recognize all of them that's in my park. They, they bought this land, you know, and I, I have to say I regret it so bad that I made this move, but they bought the land, and when they did, they knew the day they came in and bought, they were sitting in the middle of a bunch of campgrounds. They weren't hid and covered up and anything else. It was there. It was open. You could, if you walked out on the peninsula, I've been out there many times because I owned a large chunk of that. And you stand up before they cut it down or anywhere, and you walk from side to side or turn around. And whichever way you look, there's going to be a campground. That's what that is over there. That's what it's been for a hundred years. And I'm not trying to be uh, rude or not concerned about them, but I think there's a way that both of us could work together if they would only listen. And then they brought up about the, the trees. I do want to address that. On that peninsula, they showed the picture with all the the uh, the trees and limbs and stuff. Yes. There was in that property, we hired a guy, he came in, and we timbered a lot of our properties before and grow back. He came in and cut down and looked at that, and we had some diseases in some. But if you stand on that little peninsula right there, and I don't care if the temperature is 105, the wind you will feel coming across that lake on that peninsula. And any time it rains or storms, there's trees that fall down. We probably had in the neighborhood of 20 or more trees, a lot of them with the tops knocked out or knocked out, roots exposed and that type thing. We understand the rules of what it is. That will be one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. We understand that if we cut down a tree that's bigger than four inches in diameter, I have to replace it. And I've replaced it. Not there yet because we haven't done it. But I've replaced it where we've done other work around our home and all around. So I feel like people are judging us and putting us in a situation when they think of a park. And yes, my mother's park is old, but I will tell you this, it is mowed and kept up. Right now in my park, I have a gentleman that's on their board that owns a place in my park, rents a place in my park. I talked to him about it. He, he did not want to offer a letter, but he does love our park. And he is, it, it, you know, if he would, he didn't want to get, have any trouble with them. But he can tell you that there is nothing, noise, the problems. We don't, and, and they mentioned children on golf carts. But we do not allow that. Well, I'm sorry, but there was like five or six or eight of them who came up and brought up all kind of things. 
and we're allowed to say it, and we had nothing, and they have nothing to bank it on or put it up against because that's not who we are. And I tell you, I've thrown out eight at one time years ago. I never had to do it again since. But I don't put up with partying, drunkenness, ill, nothing on my mother's part since I manage it for her. So that's all I can say. I feel that we've really been really talked about because they fall land in the middle of multiple, multiple. And, the, and this is a different type of park. It meets a need that like the Nova Nights and the everything that this lady brought up. Right now you try to get into High Falls and half the time I get 100 calls a year because we don't do it. We don't do transient people. So. Probably not, but I'm going to get up. Well, thank you. You, you represented yourself very well. Well, I hope so. This is my first Sorry, time. But yes. Is, is there something new? Oh, uh, 30 seconds. Oh, those 20? The one thing he said he had no knowledge oh, of. Oh, because we've already gone through the... Yes. Yeah. He said the one thing he had no knowledge of was about what we had done about the trees that was cut down on that property. My lawyer has handled that. Okay, so we're we're now at the point where there's discussion among the board members, and who would like to speak first in terms of your thoughts of what you've heard? I'll be glad to go first. Um, I will fully disclose that I was born and raised in Oconee County, lived here all my life, been here for 55 years, and I've seen time and time again people come before this board that are coming into retirement communities. We have a lot, a lot of members on the board that, that are here in, in, on the lake and retirement community. It's a beautiful lake. Kiwi's beautiful, Hartwell is paying the price some, but, but, but it, we, we've got a beautiful part of the world. It's been this way for a long time. The biggest issue I have, and you summed it up, I, I was, before you even said it, I had jotted it down here, is the fact that, and I heard a couple of the speakers say that you know, when they came in here, it just doesn't fit, that, that this, this park doesn't fit. Well, what I'm looking at, I'm seeing all these, these lots that are already here that was here before y'all came in. And so, to me, looking at the area, if there's something that seems out of place, it's, it's this, this upscale development. And, I, I, you know, I, I sympathize with you because, uh, you know, there's been a lot of things that have happened where people have kind of, that have lived here a long time, kind of got pushed out, pushed away. And I'm looking, and, and I've read all what, you, what you'd submitted. I, I read everything in, in the pictures that you had posted about the swimming pool and the lazy river and all that. Uh, you know, I, I hope that that's right, if this goes through, that, that it's not just going to be, you're just going to have, you know, a lot of campers out there. That is going to be a kind of a, more of a quote unquote upscale not to try to fit in with the peninsula, but just, just because I think that would be a, uh, just from a business standpoint, that would be smart. But with that being said, you know, the idea with the golf carts, the idea with the vandalism, uh, I, can't, I can't imagine that there's no police reports. Uh, you know, I, I'm going by what you said, that there were no police reports. I'm not calling you a liar. I'm just saying I find it hard to believe that if all y'all are experiencing this much crime, and this much, you know, trespassing that somebody's not calling the, the, the police out there on that. Um, one of my major concerns, let me see real quick here. Um, somebody mentioned the loss, and, and I understand this, um, and, and I, I hope that, that, that you understand. The Board of Zoning appeals as far as loss of revenue it, on either side. If we go against it and you say, well, I'm going to lose revenue because of that, because we deny it, we can't look at that. We can't look at those of you that have bought lots already, and you say if that if that goes in there, then we're not building, or we we're going to lose we're going to lose our resale value. We can't take that into consideration. What we have to look at is the law, and we have to look at the rules, uh, it's because usually somebody's going to lose one way or the other, uh, and so that's 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 pretty plain. So I do want you to understand that. One of my biggest concerns, 
is uh, is going to be the, the traffic on that road. Uh, Waterfall Road is is a busy stretch of highway already. Uh, certainly, if if that part goes in, that's probably going to increase some tra traffic. But at the same time, when the peninsula went in, that increased the traffic. So I, I think you know we, we, you can't have it both ways. You can't say well. It's bad because you're going to have more traffic because of this park, but it's not bad because you're going to have more traffic because of the peninsula. So I think that's kind of a, a, a wash. I, I think that the county will probably at some point, I think Waterfall Road, that's county or is that state road? I think it's county road. So the county probably at some point is going to spend a little money on, on that to get it, to get it up to code. Thank you. And, and so, so, but I mean, that's, that's future. The county have to look at that. But but as far as anything else, um, you know, I, I just think we have to look at the big picture here, um, and I think that we have to be we have to be mindful of the fact that uh, that just because something comes in and is quote unquote upscale, that may not necessarily mean that somebody else has to get pushed out because of it. Um, I, I think that I think that we've got to take in consideration not only those that are moving in, but also those that have been here uh, at the same time by looking at the laws and what and what the rule says. Now, I think what we do need, and I think you asked for it, and I'm hoping he's going to put it up here in a minute, is a lake overlay. Yes. Uh, and one one question I, I really have too is these RV sites. It, it appears the ones that are in existence. I'll try not to make the question to the audience because we're right. just in, in review here now. A month All right. ourselves. Are, are are these going to be full time lots, or are people going to be coming in and out? Because in the existing campground, they appear to me as when when I was there today, while they are movable, they still appear to be set up permanently. That's, she, that's the appearance. I think she has said, the, the applicant has said that uh, she deals only with permanent parties. She doesn't have transients. So all these folks that uh, they're looking at putting in these uh, proposed additional sites would still be on a semi-permanent type basis. Right. I think right. that's, yes. I think so. I think that's Where are you going with that? Well, is that, is that residential or not residential? Oh, okay. When you start talking about zoning and zoning ordinance, now you're talking about really more of a land lease with a with a semi permanent structure, because you're you're now taking a, a lot, you're you're leasing that lot for an extended period of time. That becomes more of a land lease, does it not? Not. I don't think that applies in terms of, of the, the, the term of residential. Residential is a is a single, single family ongoing uh, residential okay. application. I, I think this is certainly a commercial operation, uh, in any I, way, and, shape, or form. And, and, and I agree with that. But when we start talking about the lake overlay, which if we can get clarification and even a picture of the lake overlay in that area, I would I would like some some clarification on on why this was put in place, why it's important. Uh, because it, should that not be a major consideration for this proposed project? If I could speak to that a little bit, uh, going back to when, you know, like 15 years ago, we had no zoning in the county, mm -hmm. and uh, you could do pretty much anything you wanted, anywhere you wanted. And uh, at the time, uh, the proposal was to put in a, uh, a high-rise uh, condominium project right next to a, an existing uh, um, upscale community. That gave rise to the whole uh, whole uh, zoning uh, activity and gave rise to the zoning enabling ordinance, which applies here. Coming out of that, there were a couple of things. The, the zoning enabling ordinance allowed folks to request uh, or request uh, individual properties be zoned, uh, and that has occurred all across the county. People have been uh, ha have been zoned the way they have requested, and particularly around the lake, a lot of the lake was was zoned. The ZEO also recognized that this lake has developed, it was developed, and is being developed as an upscale residential lake. Uh, and I think we'd all recognize it's an upscale residential lake. And uh, it said, hey, we're going to establish a, an overlay 750 feet from the water line, and we're going to restrict what can go in there. It can be residential only, nothing else. Residential only, can't be over 65 feet high, 
Uh, you got to have a 25 foot buffer, and uh, there's one other I think that's in there I can't think of, but residential only. Um, anything else requires a special exception, and you've got to have a special reason to make an exception to that residential only. Uh, and uh, uh, as far as, as this particular application goes, I, I'm sure that the RV park will be a nice RV park. Man, I'll take her at her words, she's gonna make it a nice RV park. But it's not gonna just have RVs, it's gonna have a restaurant. That's yeah. another commercial operation. I think you said you're gonna have a store at some point. That's another commercial operation. Those are inappropriate. All those are inappropriate for this property. It's a, they're non-residential uses within the lake overlay. And uh, I, I got to say, this goes back to the issues we've had before with notification. If this project had been notified to folks across the lake, I don't think it was. I guess there's no one's even heard of this project. You'd have the room full of people objecting to this this project. It is just inappropriate for this for for Lake Kiwi and particularly in this this situation. The, the current campground is grandfathered. Everyone recognizes that's grandfathered. That was there before the, the zoning and naming ordinance was put in, and that's what we got. But as far as any new uh, 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 application, such as being proposed here, that should not be allowed. It is just not an appropriate use within the lake overlay. And to play off a little bit about what you're saying, <coughs> because they're asking for a use that really doesn't have any ordinance that defines what that use is and the restrictions for that use, essentially if we were to grant the this special exception, it's kind of like an open checkbook. They can do whatever they want to do with the land, I, although your intent would be there, but who knows if you're not there tomorrow or you sell the property, we're approving something that there's no real definition of what it is that we're approving and what, what that use is going to be. We that also, bothers me. <laughs> we also set the president precedent for additional development on this lake. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Well, I, I don't think that's true. Adam, you may be able to help us here. I don't, I don't think our decisions set a precedent necessarily. If we decide one way today, it doesn't mean we've got to decide that way tomorrow for another application. Is that accurate? That seems to have been the, the historical rhythm of the board. They take each case by each case. Each case is decided on its own merits, and we can, another campground comes up somewhere else, and, oh, gee, it looks like it's appropriate. We could do that. If we reject this one, if we approve this one today, we could reject the other one tomorrow. So I don't think we set the precedent, but I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Someone could could rub that in their face, saying, "Hey, you let this one go. Why not?" Mine? Well, is there anything you want to say? Well, I'm away. Um, I'm the person that was here before the lake. I saw waterfalls. I wasn't allowed to slide over it until I was 12, and the lake backed <laughs> up the year I turned 12. So um, I've got a history here, and I'm a real estate agent, so I know the value of land. And I'm in a quandary because the reality is we need RV Park. High Falls is full, South Cove is full, Charles Ram is full. We need places for people to come and enjoy our area. And we need a place that when the outage workers need to come in, they don't have spaces. I mean, literally, they pull their RVs in and go from place to place trying to find a place to be here for six Just weeks while they're here doing construction at the nuclear plant. We need it. Now, whether or not we can justify it in this spot, I don't know. But if it is done the way she's talking about doing it, it's gonna look very similar to backwater landing, except that she's gonna own the property and she's gonna own the units. I guess a couple of things I'd say. Number one, if we got a problem with, with housing transit workers with RVs, um, that's certainly, there's an option to develop that kind of a campground away from the lake somewhere. That's well, they need to be within 10 minutes of the plant. But, but, they, but these also are, are going to be permanently on those. They're yeah. not going to be transient, so they're not going to be moving in and out. They're not going to be moving in and out. They'll bring, they'll bring it and leave it here, period. And then they'll be here for the six weeks they come in to work. I, I just I can't see where that's a reason to to 
violate the lake overlay. No. The whole intent of the lake overlay is to maintain this as a, a restaurant. As a residential. Excuse me, could we just have one conversation, please? There's got to be a way. Like I, I know, um, I know, transient trailers. When when Duke was going through a major renovation, um, they put some transient trailers on property up near Kiwi Key, owned by um, one of one of the council members. Um, and, and there's got to be a way to deal with that problem without situating them on uh, on the lake. <clears throat> Do you want to say something with regard to this? Do we, are we ready to make a motion and vote, or we want to have more discussion? What, what's the feeling? Well, we were about to ask you a question. I'm sorry, but you know, as I mentioned, there's a process we have to follow. We're now in the board discussion, so we have to kind of pretend like you're not there. <laughs> so, sorry. Um, okay, so we have an opportunity, again, to vote them all together or separately. It's my recommendation that we do them separately but again is there a motion to how we handle the we'll make a motion we do exception yeah make a motion we do them separately yeah, okay second. all in favor raise your right hand okay so we'll do them individually so on the first one i would be looking for a motion to say that in the that this special exception is in accordance with the comprehensive plan and consistent with the spirit purposes and the intent and specific requirements of this chapter to include the definition and intent of the district in which the special exception is being requested. Do I have a motion for that? Well, in order to vote on it, we need a motion to get to the vote. I'll make a motion. I'll okay. second it. Is there a second? Discussion. Okay. All right, so we're now in discussion of that particular special exception. Is there any discussion? about the way you want to vote on that or deal about what that. I said. Okay. So can I get a motion either to approve or disapprove that uh, special exception? No, in no, this no, case? no, 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 you want, you want to take a vote on this motion. Right. We, we got a motion to approve the first, the, the first uh, criteria. Okay, so now we're just a vote. We have an open. We, right. oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yes, this is so fun. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, I didn't mean to jump on you. That's all right. My wife does that too. Um, okay, so we're going to ask ask for a vote on who's who is. If you raise your right hand, if you're in agreement that this isn't this is uh, this special exception does apply to this situation, raise your right hand. If if it doesn't. Raise your right hand if you're against it. Okay, defeated. Okay, so I guess the, the special exception has been defeated. And we now have to vote on, we still have to vote on, we don't, we don't have to. It, just like this, it's, 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 it's all or none. I thought we still had to, to do this based on evidence presented to the you, board. You can prevent that, yes, but not the voting part, yes, sir. We do or don't have to do it. But, but I thought you were going to ask if you were going to have to vote on each individual. No, item no, after this. no, no. Okay. So, based on the evidence presented to the board, do I hear a motion that proposed variance be denied? I'll make a motion. So proposed denied. special exception be denied. Okay. Special exception be denied. Okay. Yeah, I had a, a motion and a second. I'll make a motion. Okay. Be denied. Second. Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, so the motion is formally denied. Yes, what? I don't believe this time was a thing. All right, you're good, sir. Okay, so I guess we're now we're now in the old business. Do you have any old business that you want to bring to the board, or any board members want to bring up? Can I ask one question before we leave? <laughs> Well, that, that's not something we can have that discussion with right now. So uh, you may want to talk to the planning department. Yeah, talk to the planning department if you have any other okay, proposals. You. you do have a right to legal appeal. They don't want to say that you do. Yeah. Thank you. We will. Okay, any new business to come before the board? 
Adam, do you have anything? Yes, sir. I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last, our last meeting, uh, used to, and I, I'm, I think we got a deputy back there. Thank you, sir. Um, last, last meeting, we didn't, it wasn't really, it didn't get real scary or anything, but we've had some times when we've, we've been here over my years, I've been on this board that things have gotten a little, a little heated and it, it we'd kind of, if we knew it was going to be a big discussion going on, a lot of times the staff would go ahead and ask for a, for a deputy to be on site. Uh, if those of you that were here last last time, you know what happened out, out in the parking lot. So anyway, um, uh, no, 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 no. But but anyway, so um, I came I came down to sign the board of the, the um, order of the board um, last time, and um, I asked I got to talking with staff about uh, you know should we start having just go, going ahead and, and requisitioning or asking for a deputy to be here at all our meetings because there's nothing. This place is wide open. I mean there's there's nothing. And so, uh, long story short, I was going to come to county council meeting and go ahead and ask, but I wanted to run it by y'all first. Uh, and I know staff has had some discussion about this uh, also, to where we would just ask the um, ask Sheriff Crenshaw if he would be able to just apply, may, and it may be something not only just for this board, but any time we got a lot of boards and committees that meet, that it might be good to have somebody else, you know, just, just on here. No, so no, I just no. want to get y'all's feelings on that. I don't mind at all, or if you'd rather do it as chair, that's fine. No, but, no, not, but, no, not at all. But I, I think it might be something where, because we might set a precedent there, you know, because the aviation board and everybody else. At, know, at one time, here. we had brought that up before, and there was a cost issue, I guess, that we get billed every time. Cost issue. Yeah, well, yeah so, so be, because of the money, they didn't want to spend it on the DPA meeting. But well, let me tell you something. <laughs> My life is worth more than what they want to spend. I promise you that. But I, I don't think money's an option. We put we we throw money around a lot to stupider things than, than trying to get to some law enforcement. Be worthwhile asking a question. I, I'd feel comfortable with like Adam gauging the nature of the discussion that's going to happen. Like this week, we knew we we're going to have a bunch of people here, and it might be appropriate to have someone. We've got a cut and dried thing that's you know maybe going to have one or two people out there, and doesn't seem like it's very controversial based on what Adam's hearing. Maybe we don't need to spend the money to have a deputy here. So I'd be comfortable with that also. But however you want to go, Marty. I just, if you want to ask counsel, that's fine. I mean. If, if, if I may, I thought Mr. Cotter was going to ask if I carry a gun here, which I'm fully on board with. <laughs> if you want to get me armed here, I am. Just, we're, I'm down with it. Uh, I, I believe if you all want to do an ask for someone, the, the best course of action would be to counsel. Do you all just vote, making a motion, voting to have uh, Mr. Gilster write a letter to counsel requesting that we have some form of, of sheriff? That's probably the best way as opposed to just going straight to, although you could certainly go to Sheriff Crenshaw if you request to, but as far as the clean, following the version, following the, the way I'd recommend is just, if that's what you wanted, you can certainly do it. Uh, speaking to Mr. Connors thing, last meeting, I didn't even think twice about asking for anyone. There was no one here except yes. for the applicant um, versus this, so it's whatever you all would like. Tough call, yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to make a motion then that we, we have staff draft a letter uh, requesting it. Do you have a second? I'll second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion for an adjournment? So moved. <laughs> a second? Second. Can we discuss this? Uh, sure. <laughs> All in favor, raise your right hand. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all for working with us tonight. You, Adam, do you need these signed in sheets? Okay. Yeah, yes, discussion, please. I think. And then you, you want some, what some letter you yeah. want me to yeah. sign? I think we had a good discussion and got. Yeah, I, 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 listen, I, I, while I'm here, I, listen carefully and. I, 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 I,